All right, today I'm going to talk about my battery box. Somebody uh, on Facebook asked me about it, so I'm going to shoot a little video here. So I built this box to house a uh, ferro-lithium phosphate battery pack. The battery cells I bought from the electric car parts company, um, and they were about $550, including the battery monitoring system, or BMS. Um, that's all stored down here inside. I'm not going to open that up right now. Across the front, we have a battery cutoff. It's just a 100 amp battery cutoff, I think from Blue Sea. I think I bought it on Amazon. We have USB ports here, and then USB and USB-C here, along with a little voltmeter that uh, tells me where the battery's at. And then we have a cigarette lighter adapter. And then last but not least are the Anderson power, so power pole connectors. Um, my rule now when I get something that is uh, 12 volts, uh, snip goes the cord because I take off the cigarette lighter uh, plug because they're terrible. They're not reliable and they take up a lot of space. And I put on an Anderson power pole connector or set of connectors. They're reasonably cheap. Um, they're pretty simple. They're not uh, weatherproof by any means, but that really hasn't been a problem for me. Um, but the thing that's nice about them is they're very plug and play. It's easy to connect them and reconnect them and things like that. I actually have some uh, on the power cord in the back of my truck. Um, so it's easy to swap things around. And then the last piece here is the battery monitoring system that I got off of Amazon for, I don't know, $40 or something like that. And that just tells me what percentage of the battery is at. So I put this all in a wooden box because I do woodworking as a hobby, and it's just a throw-together box out of, I don't know, some Russian Baltic birch plywood stuff. Um, but what we have here is a Victron charge controller, 7510. If I was going to do it over, I'd buy the bigger one because I kind of need more capacity now. Um, this will do 12 or 24 volt batteries, but it does not take more than, does not do more than 10 amps of charge current. So with 12 volts, that's about 130 watts or so, the max that I can do, uh, which is proving to be not quite enough. All right, so I'm gonna pull some wires out of here. I'll explain why these are loose. Anyway, uh, this black cord here is for the battery monitoring system, as is this shunt right here. And then I have a fuse block over here that let me put fuses on all these individual things in the front. I'm really not sure that was necessary, but um, it seemed like a good idea. So I went and did it. This box over here is just the Bluetooth gizmo for the battery charger for the Victron. The modern or the new version of this has it built in. You don't need to have it separate. Um, okay, so what are these extra wires for? Well, this, the purple and orange, is for the charging. That's for uh, solar panels that I connect to this. And that goes directly into the charger. I didn't get a panel mount connector for this because they only come in pairs kind of like this one, and they only come in red and black. And I just didn't think it was a good idea to have two next to each other, one charging, one not charging. It just seemed like a bad idea. And this is okay. There's enough slop in the lid that I can actually have this sitting over the edge and the lid goes down over it. You know, the, I, this isn't a bank vault. This isn't a, a temple. This doesn't need to last for 100 years. Uh, heck, in five years, I'll probably be switching to 24 volts or some other system or putting this in an RV, God knows what. So basically, I built this to survive, you know, realistically, maybe 20 camping trips, maybe 30. I'll do in that time, just the way my life is. I just don't have that much free time. But anyway, um, this cable here is connected directly to the, uh, the load outputs on the charger. Now, these front panel things are all connected directly to the battery. They do not go through the load out outputs on the charger. That's because the load output on the charger is limited to 10 amps. Uh, the, but the advantage of having uh, something connected to the load output of the charger is that the software in the charger that connects to the little Bluetooth app on the phone lets me see you know, how many watt hours are being used and all that stuff. And that's really cool. So I connect my fridge to the load outputs on the charger so that I can see how much power the fridge is using because it's the big ticket item in terms of power consumption. Um, everything else just, just plugs into the front here and life is good. Um, of course, the battery monitor, you know, I can, I can set that so that it's showing me current. 
Uh, right now we're drawing, you know, 46 milliamps. Um, how many amp hours are left, etc. Now, how accurate is this and how does it compare to the Victron BMS? I'm just going to put it this way. This was $40. The Victron BMS is $200. Um, I wasn't ready to spend $200 on this. All right, so uh, would I do this over again or would I just buy a gold zero Yeti 1200,000, whatever? I don't know. I like to tinker with stuff. I like to build stuff. Um, so this, I, I'd probably do it again. And I don't know that I'd do it a heck of a lot differently other than, like I said before, I would get rid of the, this and I would buy the bigger charger. But um, other than that, it turned out fairly well. It's about the right height to sit on. It's about uh, I don't know, 15 inches tall. So it's kind of useful in camp as a stool. Um, like I said, it's made out of wood, so I can screw stuff into the side of it or mount stuff easily inside. Um, some people put these in ammo cans or things like that, but uh, I just, I don't know, batteries inside of a conductive container just seems like a bad idea to me. Um, other than that, it, it works well. Uh, 100 amp hours is really the, the cat's meow. Because they're lithium ferrophosphate batteries, I can use almost all their capacity. So they are 100 amp hours. I can really use at least 90 amp hours of that. Before I had this, what I was using, this little thing, and this is, I don't know, 18 amp hours. Um, it's a gel cell. Yeah, this was a joke. So then I got myself a pair of these little scooter batteries. These are 35 amp hours. I started out with one and then I added another. And at each point I was like doing the math going, 35 amp hours should be enough. Added together, it should be enough. Really, even though this is technically a 70 amp hour battery, really you only get 35 amp hours and that's not enough. With these two batteries, I was spending my life worrying about the battery and I'm worrying about batteries and solar panels and moving stuff around all the time and it was just miserable. The advantage of this guy is I can go out with it at 70 amp hours. A couple days in, it'll be down to 20 if I did nothing. If I just put the solar panels on the roof of the truck, they, they charge it enough. I don't have to worry about it. It just gets enough sun that it can do what I need it to do. Now, was it cheap? No, it was $550 for the batteries and, you know, $100 for the charger, which I already had. Probably you know, $40 and then call it 15 for the rest of these, uh, 12 to $15 each, somewhere a little more, somewhere a little less, $75, there you go. Yeah, you're still less than $1,000, okay? Now, I already had the tools to make the box, I already had some wire, I already had a lot of the things inside, so, uh, uh, the wire and the connectors and all that, so call it another 100 bucks worth of screwing around, you're still less than $1,000, you're still less than the Goal Zero Yeti. Ah, but you're going to say, Steve, the Goal Zero Yeti has a hundred or a thousand watt inverter built into the front of it. Where's the inverter for this? Well, that's a good question. So for $49 on Amazon, I got this John Dell 300 watt pure sine wave inverter. Now, I didn't go with a thousand watts because, okay, when I'm camping, I'm not running power tools, nor am I running, I don't know, electric grills or coffee makers or that kind of stuff. I basically bought this for one purpose. It was the cheaper of two alternatives to connect my CPAP machine. The other alternative was a DC cable for the CPAP machine made by Philips, the people who make the CPAP. And that would be specific to the CPAP machine, wouldn't run anything else. But with a, an inverter, obviously I can hook up my laptop, you know, other things that people have, you know, I can hook them up to this. It'll do 600 watts momentarily, I believe. And it has a couple of USB charging ports in the front. It works well. It, it'll run a computer monitor. It'll run actually a surprising amount of stuff. Um, I worked from a campsite for a few days, had my laptop plugged into this along with an external monitor, and uh, it, it handled it just fine. The other thing I like about this inverter is it, it is quiet. At 80 to 100 watts, the fan does not come on. Um, and this is on a fairly warm summer day. The, the fan doesn't come on and it's quiet. So there you go. I don't know if that's uh, is the right thing for you, but uh, I had fun putting it, putting it together and I uh, certainly enjoy using it. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.